Section 1-3, cube roots. What you'll learn in this section? To find cube roots and to solve cube root equations. New vocabulary? Perfect cube and cube root. Let's have a check of the skills you'll need. Number one, vocabulary review. The blank of a number is a number that, when multiplied by itself, is equal to the given number. And 2 through 5, find the positive and negative square roots of each number. Why learn this? Well, the large cube at the right is made up of smaller unit cubes, meaning each has a length and width of one unit, a length, width, and height of one unit. You can use this type of model to help you understand perfect cubes and cube roots. A cube number is a power with an exponent of 3. A number that is the cube of a whole number is a perfect cube. For example, 3 times 3 times 3 is 3 cubed, and that's 27. So, 27 is a perfect cube. The cube root of a number is a number that, when used as a factor 3 times, is equal to the given number. Since 3 cubed, or 3 times 3 times 3, is 27, 3 is the cube root of 27. Example problem 1, finding cube roots of perfect cubes. Example 1 says find the cube root of each number. So first consider 8, and we want to think what number times itself, times itself, so that's 3 times, equals 8. Well, right away, maybe start with 1. 1 times 1 times 1? Well, it's just 1, so that's not going to be really useful for us in most situations. And then move on to 2. 2 times 2 times 2, sure enough, that's 8. So, the cube root of 8 is 2, and we can also say 8 is a perfect cube. How about the cube root of negative 125? Well, interesting. Remember, we have difficulty finding the square root of negative numbers because a positive times a positive is a positive, and a negative times a negative is also a positive. But we can find the cube root of some negative numbers. Negative 125, for instance. Now, it's probably easiest to first consider what the cube root of 125 is. And that means what number times itself, times itself again, is 125. Now, with a little work, we'd discover that's 5. 5 times 5 is 25, and 25 times 5 is 125. But recall, we're asked to find the cube root of negative 125. So, negative 5. Right? Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. But then we multiply that positive 25 by negative 5 to get negative 125. C says 1 64th. Well, just like with square roots, we can apply cube roots both to the numerator and denominator separately. The cube root of 1, well, of course, that's 1. The cube root of 64, that's one we haven't discussed yet, is 4. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. So the cube root of 1 64th is 1 4th. And here's a quick check to see how well you understand this example. Number 1 says, find the cube root of each number. Example problem 2, finding the side length of a cube. 2 says measurement. A cube-shaped packing box has a volume of 64 cubic feet. So cube shape, that's going to be important for us. Volume, well, volume of a rectangular prism, in this case a cube is just a special kind of rectangular prism where length, width, and height are all equivalent. But volume equals length times width times height. So really we're looking for a cube root here. We want to know what the cube root of 64 is. So our volume is 64 cubic feet and we determine that the cube root of 64 is 4. Well, then our length, width, and height will all be 4 feet. Don't forget the units. That's very important. Uh, we're not talking about 4 miles or 4 inches. This is really 4 feet. Uh, we need to be specific and careful about that. So how about a quick check? Number 2 says, a different cube-shaped packing box has a volume of 125 cubic feet. 
what is the side length of that box? And example problem three, solving a cube root equation. So we're really gonna kick it up a notch. I guess we're gonna level up here. X cubed equals eight over 343. So x cubed, 8 over 343. And our job is to solve for x. So let me work over here on the right-hand side. So to solve, x cubed equals 8 over 343. Just as with other algebra problems, we want to apply inverse operations to both sides of the equation. And so we'll do that. We want to apply the cube root. That will be the inverse of cubing and therefore cancel out this uh, x to the third power and leave us with just an x. But what we do to one side, well, we must do to the other side to maintain the balance or the, the truth of the equation. So I'm moving back down here in black. So the cube root and the cube cancel one another out. And now we have x equals, and instead of rewriting this this way, I'm gonna make a transition here. We know the property that the cube root of a fraction will equal the cube root of the numerator over the cube root of the denominator. So to save us a step later, I'll do that now. Now the cube root of eight, we've discussed that in an earlier example, that's two. The cube root of 343. Here is where, if you haven't yet, I'd like you to add to your notes a list of perfect cubes. So I often write them as a, a vertical list, uh, either on the whiteboard or in my own notes, something that's just nice to refer to. And since you're allowed to use your notes on tests and quizzes at this point, um, it'll be really useful for you. One, well, one cubed equals one. Two cubed equals, equals, ah, let's clean that up a bit, equals eight, Three cubed, 27. Four cubed, 4, 16, 64. Five cubed, five times five is 25, times five more, 125. You'll probably get to the point where you have some of these memorized. Six cubed, I'm gonna let you continue this. I really do think you should have this added to your notes as it will be useful. At the very least, make sure you can reproduce this list um, if and when necessary. So I'm gonna stop now. We're getting close to 343. See, it's beginning to grow more rapidly. But I'm gonna take a look. Uh, it turns out seven cubed is 343. So that'd be seven times seven is 49 times seven. Yep, 343. So, switch back to a black pen here. Uh, seven. And that's it. Our x value is two sevenths. Now to check our work, we would do really this work in reverse. We would cube two and cube seven. Two cubed, well that is eight. And seven cubed, seven times seven, 49. And just for a quick check here, 49 times seven, seven times nine, 63. Seven times four, 28 plus six, 28 plus six, 34. And that's great, 343. And so we have double checked our work. How about the quick check? For example, problem number three. It says solve x cubed equals 27 over 216. Work carefully and make your selection from the choices below.